الحمد لله الذي من على عبده بمواسم الخيرات ليغفر لهم بذلك الذنوب ويكفر عنهم سيئات ويضاعف لهم بذلك الثواب ويرفع لهم درجات وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وزوجاته الطاهرات وعلى أصحابه أولي الهمم العاليات والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم تبعث بريات أما بعد أي لحبة في الله The holy month of Ramadan is approaching and by idni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hopefully all of us will be blessed to live to fast and complete the fast this year as some of us won't make it in fact many people won't live to see that day so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with that opportunity to fast for his sake then make sure you do so. And make sure you do so ala fiqh, wa ilm, wa basira. Have insight, have wisdom, have knowledge of why you're fasting and how to fast properly. Ayyul Habati Fillah, this year we're going to do a series and we'll start it immediately. And the series I've decided to entitle it From Fiqh Ramadan. Ahabbatifillah, in this series we'll talk about some of the ahkam of Ramadan, some of the fiqh, and try to deal with different masail and questions that we might have that might come up during this time. And we'll also talk about some of the manners in adab, and we'll try to encompass a lot of the important matters regarding Ramadan and its meanings and its meanings for us and how we can use this time to improve our lives and to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during this holy month used to encourage the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and inform them about the holy month of Ramadan and remind them of the reward and the greatness and encourage them to do good deeds and the forgiveness and the mercy and the blessings that are contained during the holy month of Ramadan. So the Prophet والسلام, used to encourage the Sahaba to do good deeds. So we're going to encourage ourselves first and foremost to try to benefit from this time from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His many favors and we will remind one another of the benefits of Ramadan and some of its rulings and ahkam. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا كَانَ أَوَلَ اللَّيْلَ مِنْ شَارَ رَمَضَان مِنْ شَارَ رَمَضَان سُفِدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَمَرَدَتُ الْجِنَّ وَغُلِقَتْ أَبْوَابَ النَّارِ the Prophet ﷺ said in a Sahih Hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi وغيري, that if the first day, the first night of Ramadan, كان أول الليلة من شهر رمضان, that the shayateen, the devils, would be shackled and the jinn would be repelled and the doors of hell would be locked and during this time every night during the month of Ramadan 
someone will call out, there will be a caller who will call out and will say, Ya Baghi al Khair, Akbar. You know, O oh, person who desires goodness, do good. You know, be open towards good and doing good deeds. Wa ya baghi ashar aqsar. And O oh, you who desire evil, restrain yourself. And this is every night. And this is the same hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi. Ayyul habati fillah. This time we need to take it and accept it. Open our hearts to khair, to goodness. Open our hearts to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a time for us to prepare to put those evil deeds aside. Those regular practices that we know that are haram, know that are impermissible. To push them aside for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have problems with cigarettes, this will give you a chance to begin quitting smoking. Because you can't smoke while you fast. That breaks your fast. So put it aside. If you fast that many hours without a cigarette, then this can help you after Ramadan. And of course, during the night of Ramadan, strive your best to leave off those cigarettes. Don't conserve that energy so that way the night of Ramadan, you begin to smoke again. Likewise, the one who is in even greater sin, perhaps, who drinks alcohol or smokes weed. Use this time. You can't smoke weed and you can't drink alcohol when you're fasting. Your fasting will not be accepted. Nor will your prayer be accepted. So use this time that you will not be indulging in those vices. Use that to continue on into the evening. In the evening, try to join the Muslims in Tarawih, in the Masajid. Try your best to be around Ahla Khair. If you have time, spend time with the people of goodness during this holy month of Ramadan. Sit in the Halaqat al Ilm. If there is knowledge based gatherings in your communities, and spend your time seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him to can help you to continue doing those good deeds at, even after Ramadan. Likewise, the one who involves themselves in zina and adultery and pornography and all those other vices which affect so many, so many people from mankind and so many of the Muslims that it, it leaves almost very few houses untouched rahimullah, un except for those who Allah has blessed with mercy and favor to not be touched one way or another directly or indirectly by those type of vices because they deal with the shahwat they deal with the desires so use this time O oh, you who indulge in those type of vices use this time that of course you won't indulge in those activities in the day and make effort, use that momentum that you gathered during the day when you fast to continue on in the evening so you don't go to those vices in the evening. And then after that, once you have completed the month of Ramadan, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, do not use that momentum, that momentum of khair, to not go back to those vices. Do whatever it takes to make a waqaya make a, uh, a shield and a protection and a barrier between you and the, that, that ma'asi that you used to indulge in. Ayyul ahabbati fillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with the bat, on the sunnah to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to follow the salaf of this ummah, the salaf of salih, who, as Imam Malik said, rahimahullah ta'ala, لا يصلى آخر هذه أمة 
إلا بما صلها أولها أو كما قال إمام مالك رحمه الله تعالى one of the four imams from the أئمة أربعة الفضلاء الفقهاء العلماء أصحاب المذاهب he said رحمة الله عليه he said that the later generations from this ummah would not become rectified except with following the way of those who were rectified before, meaning the, the, the first generations, meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. Ayyullah habbati fillah, that's dalil ala following the minhaj and madhab of the salaf of this ummah. And this is the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a. Walau kari al Kafirun. Walau kari al Mushrikun. Walau kari al Ahl Bida wal Hawa. Wa Zandaka. And even those who claim and lie about Ahl Sunnah and say that the Salafis reject the Ayyimbat Arba. Or that the Salafis reject the Salaf. Or all these other false claims. Ayyul Habbati Fillah. Don't look to that those those false claims of the claimant, but in fact look to the haq. Look to that which is going to bring you closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that's what we try to invite you to. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq, and may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings in doing so. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bless us all to make the holy month of Ramadan. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bless these. Uh, sittings, these halakat that we're going to have to be beneficial for us all and may Allah put it on our scale of good deeds and make it a source of forgiveness for us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.